Yes, ma'am. What was I talking? I was asking you a question. Your answer you will give. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. I am your colleague. Okay. Working in the same ship. Okay. And I am irritating you. Okay. Do you have the guts to irritate me? Yes. In the office? No, office no. If he irritates me and the news reaches head office, they say you do the right to do that. He has to report it to his superior. He cannot take anything in his hand. Is that right? Yes, yes. So, can there be horizontal fights? Are you working in the office? So, do you have an horizontal fight with the colleague or you report to the manager? You can send an email to the HR, right? Can you take authority and strike him? So, why is it we want to fight horizontal and not take the issue to the vertical head office? If I have issues, I don't want to talk this way. I'll talk to the head office. Let the head office deal with him. As for me, what's the next line? Was it? Huh? To tell the head office? Which head office are you talking? The Lord. So, Prabhu Gana Bolna? Complain kya? Aap bol raha jo ho raha hai. Ho complain hai? See, there are two things I said yesterday. Prosecution and punishment. There are three kinds of life. You go, you go, you go. There are three kinds of life. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There are three kinds of life. The hellish life, the hellish life, the human life, and the heavenly life. Hellish life, human life, and heavenly life. Hellish life are those people when they see good, when they see good, they want to respond with evil. Hellish life are those when they see good they want to respond with evil. Example The Pharisees saw Jesus doing good. The Pharisees saw Jesus doing good and godly things. Their response was evil and to finish him. And they use lies and false witnesses and they use lies and false witnesses was evil. And they use lies and false witnesses to do away with him. To crucify him. And to put him to death. To crucify him and put him to death. And that is called the hellish life. The second life is a human life. Human life are those people, they do good to those who are good to them, they do good to those who are good to them, and they do evil to those who are bad to them. And third is the heavenly life. 
all of us. <laughs> right there, me. Third one, heavenly life. Heavenly life are those people they do good all the time. to them and when evil is done to them their response is to ignore that evil their response is to ignore that evil and continue to love and continue to love unconditionally And bless and bless those who do against them, those who do bad things against them. Hallelujah. Now tell me. Which one am I? Each one has to ask the question. Sometimes can I be hellish? Because of jealousy, can I be hellish? Many times I'm human. I only want to do good to those who do good to me. And if you do something bad, I can show you how nasty I can be. And heavenly life is Jesus. Heavenly life after the Pentecost, the apostles. Take for example Paul. He cast out a demon out of a slave girl. What did he get in return? Hammering. Being beaten with rods. Put in the prison. Paul and Silas. But they are sitting there and cursing those people. What does it mean? Hello? What does it mean? Paul and Silas, what are they doing in the prison? So did they have strife all along? They, yes, yes, they had around them. What was their response? Praising God. Are they praying God get us out of the prison? <laughs> they are thanking God for the good we did and we receive this. Lord, you have chosen us to stand as an example to give glory to you. That's a heavenly life. So your question I want to ask you, did anybody hammer you at home with rods? I'm just asking you, let's just listen first. Paul and Silas were hammered, beaten with rods. Did they do anything wrong? No. No. Were they put in the prison? Yes. Now, can that imprisonment take them to death? Yes. But do you, what is their attitude? Practice that. Everything in your life will change. If there is a fight at home, You make peace with yourself first. See, you are, you are thinking about others, no? First you have peace, then you let it doesn't matter to you what he does to me. So you can stand at the side and talk to the head of to be in peace. So most of the time, are we heavenly? Cycle Gadi, Tom Tom Tom, Gola Gadi, Ting Ting Ting, Ava Jaya, Tom Tom Tom, Jabal Naza, Abdora. 
बोलो बोलो अभी क्या हो रहा है लिरिक्स ऑफ फैंटेस्टिक बट वन द लिरिक्स बिगिन टू चेंज इज द एटीट्यूड स्टिल द सेम आई एम गोइंग थ्रू फॉल्स एक्सिशन फॉर ट्वेंटी सिक्स ईयर्स बट यू नॉट सी मी यूजिंग अ पुल पुट एंड फायरिंग पीपल एंड ऑल आई एम एंजॉइंग एवरी मोमेंट ऑफ माई लाइफ इट इज अ प्रूफ दैट आई एम ब्रिंगिंग ऑनर टू गॉड इट इज अ प्रूफ that i'm giving glory to god it is a proof that i'm living for christ day and night it is a proof that whatever i have i'm putting it in as an investment to change people's life why should i get angry if you are living a heavenly life you know one timothy 3 13 what is it 13 or 16 Is it two Timothy? It is two Timothy. A plan three twelve. Yeah. Oh, okay. Start with. Fully known my doctrine, but you have fully known my doctrine, matter of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecution, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all, the Lord, the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all that will live godly life in Christ Jesus shall be Timothy chapter three twelve. Yeah, all that will live godly life in Christ Jesus shall. Huh? And that's the proof. What is a persecution? A persecution is you did something good, and Jesus said, "Blessed are you when people revile you, insult you, abuse you, speak all kinds." Of things against you falsely, for my sake. Now, when I was going in the club, did anybody speak anything? When I was in gang fights, did anybody speak anything? When I was with all kinds of sin, did anybody speak anything? And if that time I was spoke, somebody had to speak. It is absolutely right. It is shameful because I have been giving dishonor to God, and that announcement should change my life. There should be repentance, and I need to change. But if I am doing something that the Word of God is saying, and now I am being accused of and brought dishonor and shame. I must be more excited that what I'm doing is bringing glory to God, is bringing honor to God. So, is it shameful or is it exciting? That is why you find the apostles and all. He says, if you decide to live a godly life, everything will break loose against you. But the devil knows if I don't stop him, he's going to destroy my kingdom anyway. And if nothing is happening, then why should he even come against you? You are already in his team. What do you say? So I'm 
I shake my life and ask a question, do I live a heavenly life, a human life, or a hellish life? And the retreat should change me from hellish, human, to heavenly. And when you live a heavenly life, everything else will be added unto you. That's why I know. Even if I have to spend and spend and spend, I know my God will still replace with or restore with multiple resources. When I went to Australia, I said we are organizing a retreat for all of you who are abroad, where when I come, I am able to preach for four hours or five hours and I am gone. And it's not going to change you. But if you come, to the airport in Manu, we will pick you up. We will take you to the resort. We will give you the best stay, the best food, the best sleep and the best teaching. And after 15 days, we will even drop you to the airport. So you won't have to spend anything. And it's all free. What is the intention? The intention is only one thing. If you can be there for 15 days and listen to the word, your life will begin to get a start of heavenly life and the moment you get a heavenly life your lifestyle you can't keep your mouth shut there's a fire in your bones and you open your mouth and go everywhere with this trouble and get involved in the trouble to get people out of trouble that's heavenly life heavenly life is not I preach but when there's a trouble I go Today I got up late and I said, sorry, I got up late. Because I started getting calls at night. And I'm answering calls at any time. I don't have appointment time and this time. I never had an appointment time. You can call up. And when I'm talking to that person, that person is crying. And I said, you just do this homework and we'll talk again. And after a few weeks or few months, that person is calling back. But now the word has gone in. It has changed her from hellish or human to heavenly. Now the response is not Tom and Jerry. I used to watch Tom and Jerry and I used to laugh. And one day the Lord asked me, Is that the gospel truth that you are listening? I switched off the Tom and Jerry. But somebody said it's an entertainment. Yes, it's an entertainment with wrong things in your mind. Because have you ever seen Tom and Jerry friends? Friends? Oh, you don't know what is Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Can you believe there is one man I found on earth who doesn't know Tom and Jerry? Cartoon ya, Tom and Jerry. Chuar Vilia. Don't, don't, don't go to see, huh, please. Well, then you are imitating Tom and Jerry at home. And then asking God, please help me. Is Tom and Jerry a human life or a hellish life? I mean, definition of Malum Bhandi ke baat kya bolta hai? A cartoon, a cartoon hai jo hellish hai. Why don't you see, sometimes they have also cartoon of Jesus. Also cartoon of Paul, also cartoon of the apostles. Why don't you see those Paul cartoons? You will learn how they were once upon a time hellish. Now what Paul was doing to the early Christian when he was Saul, is it hellish? Come on. Now the same man who is hellish, after he seen Jesus and getting the Holy Spirit, did he live a heavenly life? And he not only lived a heavenly life, what revelation he got, he put in writing and today we are reading what his experience is and that same what he wrote is still working today. So what are you going to leave on this planet earth when you are gone, somebody will read what you left behind and they will turn from hellish to heavenly. And if you are not leaving anything for the next generation, you have lost everything. 
when you go to the funeral anybody's funeral you look at the body and ask a self this man lived for 80 years out of that 80 years how much of his life did he live for others how much of his life did he use the gospel to others and if he did not do any of those things he has lost his purpose he has lost his assignment and not only that he has destroyed so many people let me give you an example i am a businessman my business was working beautiful and the reason after that i wanted to do big business is i hate to ask money in my life i hate to ask money i am a person who work hard and work hard earn my money and use it in the kingdom it is miserable for me to ask money so that's why i wanted to do business and i said god give me some time and give me the business that i can work hard and use every rupee that i earn into the kingdom so that i don't need anybody to come and give me the money he said that would be pride that would be pride so i said then what do i do i stand on the pulpit and ask money he said no you live a life and you teach people how to live a life and you teach them the truth so that they move from human to heavenly and you pour out your heart and teach those people and when they learn their lives will change Yesterday, a young man came. I don't know his story at all. He came for one and a half day, and he met me and spoke to me, and he said, "I was in debts, brother, and I met you face to face today. But I met you on YouTube, and what you taught, I began to practice." and i've come today to tell you what you did has blessed me so much and i brought a very small seed brother to give it to you and i want you to continue what you're doing and he came back to give me 50000 and i looked at that and i said why this big he said brother it's too small because now where god is taking me has multiplied in such a way that i'm following the system what you are teaching day and night and i'm prospering every day and this is the smallest seed i could offer you did i have to chase him i don't clap don't clap don't clap don't clap you know what i want to hear from you you have changed your life to heavenly life the moment you change your heavenly life now what is jesus saying seek the kingdom of god and his now what did this man do is living a life of righteousness he has changed his life to heavenly life and he said my business has multiplied and multiplied and multiplied and this has happened only in one and a half year so do i need to look at people's pockets never never will i see whether is a rich man or a poor man it does got nothing to do because he is never my source and he will never be my source my source is christ and i will look at him praise god and that's how my life is and i have never any shortage of money not that i've got in abundance but when i need the money my god will provide i'm so sure about it that's why i said god this time i'm going to take a bigger project of calling these people from abroad and coming for 15 days stay with international food international stay and when they see us in india giving the best service free they will believe in the christ whom i preach but they want to 
see how's my lifestyle first am i loving those who are rich more or am i loving those poor people more and if i'm loving those poor people more jesus saying you are really loving me son and if i'm rich, loving the rich people more he say what is so special even the pagans do that does he say that come on talk to me sister yes or no nobody talks to me at least you are talking yes or no praise god hallelujah so let's go to this one of my favorite topic let's go to galatian chapter 5 Not only a person is sitting and listening to all these truths, understanding the truths, and then is saying, "Oh my God, I've been an expert in praying. I've been an expert in telling scriptures. I'm an expert in giving messages. But when I look at the difference in life, many a times I'm hellish life. Many a times I'm on a human life." and very rarely i'm experiencing a heavenly life so what do i need to change i give you the definition of three life what should be my top priority what should be my goal and do you get chance to practice with people around you and if people are nasty is it an advantage for you because you can get the test again and again and again till you pass the test and once you start passing the test it becomes a lifestyle it becomes a habit but if the person is not sitting in the class and doing that job which is not his job now the person is irritated jealous angry discriminating between people the person already got disqualified that's why god looks at the heart and that's why david got selected his brothers were more smarter than david they were good looking good health everything good in the natural but heart condition was stinking self centered and with this self centeredness god is not there but somebody said but i prayed and i preached and the person got healed they got healed not because you preach they got healed because god is faithful to his word because when you spoke his word it is god's responsibility to work on his word but your life will be miserable do you understand because the devil is saying you are so right god is working so many miracles he not working miracles because of you He is working miracles because he is faithful to his word. Hallelujah. So Galatians chapter five verse thirteen. For brethren, for brethren, ye have been, you have been called unto liberty. Wow. 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 God. has called you chosen you for freedom god has called you for how many of you want to serve god not you sister I'm looking at the hands, and heaven is also looking at that. How many of you want to serve God? Some have got only this much, and they can't even lift this much. That means fifty fifty. Ganesh, what about you? How to get into the kingdom? Take it. For what are you serving God? I put your hand down. Is Jesus perfect in all his ways? Are you perfect? How can an imperfect serve a perfect? Start thinking. Jesus.
Jesus said, I've come to serve you, not you serving me. Did he say that? Yes. What makes you think that you can serve him? In fact, we need him all the time even to stand up. Is that right? So actually speaking now, let's take an example. I am talking to you. Am I talking to you or Christ in me is telling me what to preach? So he is serving whom? Christ is serving me and what is serving me? I am able to talk to you. Correct? So do I need Christ's service 24 hours 7? So can I ever say to Christ, I am going to serve you? The day I understood, Lord, you said you came to serve me and not me to serve you. Did you tell his disciples? Hello? Yeah. Can we talk? See, only when you understand the truth, your life will change. So when he is going to serve you, are you taking his service? Or you are saying, it's, it's okay, Lord, I can handle this. We cannot do one thing. And that's what he said. The one who does not abide in me, he can do nothing. But the one who abides in me, he can do anything because I'm the true wine who is supplying the sap to the branch to go and bear fruit. So if he is the one who is serving me, can I boast that I preach? Even on my CD, I would not write my name because I would find it so wrong to write my name that I am the one who preached it. Praise God. So what about serving others? Christ says, can you give me a body so that I who is serving you will now serve them through you, but I am the one who is serving them. So now when you are going to go and pray for somebody, are you going in your name or his name? So are you going to stand in a style? Or are you now in humility saying, I don't know what to talk Lord, can you please help me? What should I say? And many a times people think this fellow I brought in them to pray and he's not even opening his mouth. He is only sitting quietly and looking at what is happening and suddenly God gives you a clue of some sentence that the conversation is going on and from there starts the preaching. If you ask me, what are you going to preach today? I don't know. But the things which are in the hard disk, he can take it out any time and say, I want you to preach on this topic. And when I am depending on him, it's beautiful. It's exciting. Because I also don't know what's going to be the next line. And those who do my PowerPoint, if they are not with patience, they'll get blown off. But I can give them a PowerPoint and say, just make a PowerPoint and keep it ready and we'll start. And during the quiet time, they speak one line, one word. And the Lord said, take that word and teach them what is the meaning of that word. And now the person with the PowerPoint is, hey, I spent 30 minutes, man. 30 minutes I spent on the PowerPoint. And now you change the topic. What do you think about yourself? That's why my PowerPoint is one girl in, in Australia. Her name is Maria. I'll tell Maria, prepare this. She says, no problem, I'll prepare. Because in my mind and heart, it is not going to remain. Might be two slides will be there, but after that the change will take somewhere else. But because she knows me, she has no issues. Those who don't know me will really get with me. So brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an 
application to the flesh. But by love serve one another. Praise God. How do I know that this person is walking in liberty? How do I know that you are walking in liberty? Huh? I just give you the mic here. Please give you the mic. And please keep one mic on the side. Yeah. How do I know you are walking in liberty? You are free, okay. It's not okay. I'll just give you the mic. When you are in peace of mind and uh, giving the Jesus to others, we say equally to the others. Mister, whenever I ask you a question, the answer is always in the scripture. Exactly. अरे ये ये दूसरे जात वाला बड़ा बड़ा आंसर देता है। What is he saying? इधर लिखा है ना मैं क्या बोल रहा हूँ? इधर लिखा है। हम लोग क्या कर रहे हैं? अपने खोपड़ी में जो चल रहा है बोल रहा है। ये क्या बोल रहा है? जो लिखा है बोल रहा है। You don't think how come he's giving all the right answer? He said लिखा है ना। Are we paying attention to लिखा है? Are we paying attention to what? We have learned from the past. Hello, which one do we answer? Lika hai? Or what you have learned before? Then why you did not give me the answer? How do I know that a person is walking in liberty? The answer is he says. If you, if you serve one another because of love, let me ask you a question. You got two daughters, and these are also outsiders, and these people need some help. Will you serve them the way you serve your daughters? Then you are in liberty. If you can't serve others the way you serve your family, you are still in the bondage. So most of the time, our services are bondage or free. Because your flesh will say, "Ye mera hai, ye log loka hai." But are you born from your mother's womb? Yes. Are they born from your wife's womb? Yes. But now, are we all born from the father's womb? So how do we treat one another? For me, when this retreat was going on, I said, "What are the facilities here?" And they said, "This is not there. This is not there. This is not there." Now, if I'm going to have a retreat for ten days, for ten days should I make a big investment? But if I have the love of Christ, then I will ask a question: If my family comes, do I want to give them the best? So, what about you? Are you an outsider? For me, you're not an outsider. You are my family. And that's why I want to see that how can I serve everybody with the best. And when that becomes your attitude, you cannot discriminate. That's why I said, brother, my mathematics is not the mathematics of the people. My mathematics is what the word of God is saying to me. And I will do what the word of God says. I might look foolish, but doesn't matter. I rather be foolish than a smart person. But the smart person is saying, "What shall be my benefits?" I'm ready to invest. मेरे को कितना मिलेगा? 
and when it is murku jitna mile in small god can never trust you with big but if god can see you faithful in small he says i can give you and keep giving you because i know your heart you are a genuine christian that's freedom others you already in bondage so how do you know you are free or you are not free the level of your love for one another should i continue to talk about the change yeah please please ask question oh, just give him the just give him the mic please ask question we just said that the galatians 5:13 says but by love serve one another yes so my sister was serving there what was the difference in that serving and like how is that concerned now has she come to do that job or she come from home for the retreat for the retreat i know you want to be a lawyer no problem i know it's hurting you with what i said because you love them but if you really love your child will you not correct your child yes of course correct now if she has come to study so that when she studies is it going to benefit her no that will not benefit no no if she studies this uh, yes of course this is, is it going to benefit her temporary or lifetime lifetime so where will you invest your time a lifetime it's your investment what you are today in which your position is what you have invested your time in the past that is why you will see me wherever i go i don't stay the night after the meeting is over i'll take my bag and i'll move so my investment over here is finished i'm looking for another investment i don't like to sit and gappa mari i like to sit to learn the word i go out and do some charity there's a time to study and there's a time to serve and when you are at service if somebody comes against you you are well equipped to respond heavenly way and not human way Then most of the time, people in the church practice heavenly life or human life. Let's be honest. Talk. So, have they ever got their freedom? Jesus has given them freedom. He has called them for freedom. But are they using the flesh or are they using the spirit? Are they moved by the spirit or are they moved by the flesh? And that's why he says, "For brethren, you have been called." and to live only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh or flesh anything that contradicts the word of god is flesh how quickly can you get bitter and look at the 14 verse for all the law is fulfilled in in one word Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. How much do you love yourself? Do you love your neighbor the same way? Especially new creation, when people would enter the gate and the preacher is preaching, the first thing they you can see who is entering in. In new creation, the first thing people will do is always look towards heaven. then they will enter in why do you think they are looking towards heaven when i tell you why do you think they are looking towards heaven is not that you fail ho gaya chal bol i will not but that and in the atma de that new creation mein koi the na sangit le nahi there is no rule at all एवढं मोठं हे केलंय म्हणजे केवढं मोठं बांधलंय असं वरती विचार किती धन्य रे धन्य तू परंतु तू चुकला चुकला कारण पहिला बघता फॅन कुठे 
मी बोललो ना तू नेहमी आत्म्यामध्ये विचार करतो अरे थोडा काय काय फुले जागतिक जागृती जागतिक संसारिक मध्ये पण विचार कर ना थोडा उत्तर देताना हे लोक वरती काय बघतो फॅन कुठे आहे तिकडे जाऊन बसणार का माय फ्लेश इज सेम आय वॉन्ट टू बी कम्फर्टेबल बट अ पर्सन इन द स्पिल्ड विल से I need the place for somebody else and I'll go and take a seat where nobody wants to sit. Now, now, if there is a buffet and the person goes to take chicken, some people want to see how beautiful that piece is. Oh, and there is a market. This is a little bit of a car. This is a little bit of a car. This is a little bit of a car. All the best piece in my plate, baki jo gala bhi lage sab dusre ko lage. In that you understand, is this person living a life of freedom or life in bondage? Hey, hey, genuine Christian hai, don't be. In every moment you come to know whether this person is living in the flesh or living in the spirit. And the Bible says, don't allow the flesh. even for a moment to have a hold on you and then he says for the all the law you want to obey all the law ten commandments he said all those laws are fulfilled in one law when you love your neighbor as you love yourself so what do you love for yourself best place best chair best this best this now can you turn it around and give all the best to your neighbor and take all that the neighbor has and say lord i am still comfortable so i don't have any issues garmi hai garmi nahi hai there was one retreat in my zindagi mein that was the best retreat of my life in those days we used to have it in dasia in goa and the capacity of the retreat center was 40 people and as you know all our retreats are free from the beginning But we used to pay per head, and the kitchen had the capacity of forty, and the bathroom and the toilet had the capacity of forty. So when we were taking the registration, the person at the registration, I said, "Whoever comes, you have no right to say houseful. You have to take everybody. And if I hear that you sent anybody out, I will never sit on the desk again. If God has sent somebody." you keep saying yes 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 let god be with those who have come and let god is the source so let him be so somebody said 120 is already over should i close the booking now capacity is how much 120 is over we went to about 140 or 150 now everybody is looking at me and saying how is he going to manage So I started my retreat and I said, "All of you have got watches with your name. Some of them are my people who are the spies, and you don't know who are my people. And their job is to trouble you, and your job is to listen to the word and practice when they trouble you. Good retreat. Other words, the use of the retreat." If you don't, if you are not going to practice, and if you are able to practice here, then when you go home, you are already equipped to practice there. Shall we play the game? And he said yes. I said, as for the preacher, he gets a room. But I want to tell you tonight, when you go to sleep, you will find this: the lowest ladder from ground floor. You have to go to the first floor. The first ladder. Is mine. I've done my reservation. Nobody is going to take the first letter. I'll be sleeping here. Now you all go and search anywhere, whatever place, and you go to sleep. Full freedom. So they saw the preacher sleeping on the first letter. Now anybody got issue? 
Now, the only time some of them have been praying, when they go inside, they are not going to come out for 20, 25 minutes. Now, are you going to give Dali? You lost that match. But if you are going to say, God, help me, please, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, help me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I guarantee you, you will not be in trouble. And if there is somebody with a badge troubling you too much and you can't bear it, you can come and report to me. I will talk to that person. Don't put so much of pressure. What is the pressure? God is my witness. 150 people, not one complain. And the room that I had, I've given it to all those who are sick in my room. I did not have any issue. People have no issue when they prepare their mind. When you have preparation and have already made a strong decision that this test I am going to pass. The Bible is all about preparation. Sometimes you see on the video, you know, some people say about the Indian Army soldiers. You see how they go into the bus, they come running and one fellow standing there, two, two soldiers are standing there, they come running and from that hand, the commander goes into the window in a fraction of a second, straight inside, and hand on hand. These people have been trained, they have been prepared. In the same way, a Christian is prepared to walk in love, no matter what happens. No matter what happens, no frustration, hot, heat, anything, no problem. That's why whenever I, who is, where is organizing my retreats, I don't even ask them where I'm going to stay, what I'm going to eat, what is the temperature, anything prepared. I'll ask you, can the children from the city go to a tribal place where there is no bathroom, no toilet and stay there for a week? People who have been raised in the city. Possible? People who have been raised in the city and then have bath in the riverside for girls. <coughs> Not easy. They don't even know how to have bath with clothes on. And these, one of them is Clinton's wife, Shayla. Gauri. They have gone to the tribal places where there is no toilet, no bathroom, river, and the river water is very warm, hot. And there they go to a bath. And they stay with those people and teach them the word. And there came a call from Radha and who was the other one, I don't know, I think Gauri was there. And they're crying and calling me. And I said, what happened? They said, we want to talk to you. The next time you fix up a tribal retreat, this parish, we want to come again and again, see that you don't transfer us to somewhere else. And there was a priest was teaching the Sunday and boys. I said, baby, can you please say that again? I'll put it on the speakerphone. And they're crying with tears and they're sharing how that 15 minutes was difficult. But after that, what they preached, the word of God, the whole village was on fire. And they said, nobody comes here to preach. And they're, they're making their advance booking for the next time. We don't send anybody there. We will come. And then I said, don't worry. And I bought tents, portable tents, so that you can get into your tent, you can finish all your work in the tent, you don't have to go to the river. But they said, even if it is like that, we don't mind. Because we are doing it for Jesus. Gauri was there. So now tell me, looking at her, can she do that? That is a Christian life. Christian life is not to be sitting in an AC room and preaching. Christian life is, give me the, show me the way that you are going to that place and living with those people. 
That's a question. That is love serving you. Now when I go to Africa, believe me, sometimes you have to drink water from the stream. Okay? The first time we went, we had bath. Three of us finished 200 liters of drum. And the next morning, little water is remaining. So I said, uh, where do you get water? And the girl said, no, we have to go and get the water from here. So I said, give me two, two gallons. So she started laughing. Why? I asked for two. And she picked up one. And we started walking. Yeah, no. Walking. Yeah, no. Walking. Long distance. And then when the two gallons were full, I'm lifting up. Count them. That's why she was laughing. And she took a gallon and put on her head. And she's walking. What am I doing? Struggling. And that girl filled 200 liters in that drum. And we three people finished it in no time. If you are to fill that gallon, the drum, would you finish that 200 liters? Ah. And then struggling, struggling, I reached the church and the people came out of the church and they're looking, Indian carrying two gallons and they're laughing. And when the priest saw, he said, why do you do that? I said, my brothers are sleeping. When they get up and they have to go to the toilet, there will be a problem. So father said, leave it there. And then the people took it. Then he said, I know a place. Come, let's go. And he put all the gallons in the car and he went. Where do you think he went? To the stream. Flowing. As I fill the gallons. And we are filling and we know what is going on. And we have to take bath. So we decided we will take bath. But not during the day, during the night. Like the rain. Kya gaya malu bhi nubir da? And then the priest started asking me, how can you be so comfortable when you come from Dubai and then you come to Africa and you are so comfortable? I said, I have made up my mind. In whatever state, I have learned to be content. Whether I am full or empty, I have learned to be content. That is what Paul says. I have learned in my affliction, in my good times, in my bad times, not to give the flesh even a moment to have bitterness, anger, envy. And if I have been able to, to, to fight with my flesh, I am victorious. I don't need to fight with the other person. Many times people say, that person did this to me. That person did this to you because you have still to get in your heart. Did Jesus say, cast your burdens unto me? So why are you carrying the burden? He said, cast the burden to me for I care for you. So are you supposed to be carrying the burden? But have you been carrying? Did he tell you to carry? Because he's saying, I created your body, your whole system for love. And if you are not operating in love, but you are carrying other burdens, you are actually drinking poison the whole day. And if a person is drinking poison the whole day, what do you think would be in the condition of his health? I don't know when was the last time I took medicine. Praise God. So is the full love fulfilled in one word? Love your neighbor as you love thyself. Praise God. So write down. Galatians 5, 13 and 14 says,
God has called us to liberty. God has called us to liberty. Only that we do not use only that we do not use liberty for an occasion to the flesh. God has called us into liberty only that we do not use liberty for an occasion is there in the scripture for an occasion to the flesh if I want to know if I want to know if I'm really living if I'm really living a life that meets God's standard that meets God's standard then I must ask myself then I must ask myself if I love others I must ask myself if I love others as I love myself. Do you love yourself? How many of you love yourself? Do you love your life? How many of you love your life? How many don't you love your life? I said life, not wife. Do you love your life? Yes. And Jesus said, the one who loves his life will lose it. And the one who hates his life will find new life. So do you love your life? But until now you did not know the definition of life. That's why you love your life. What is life? What is life? Do you have life? No, no, so she doesn't know. Did Jesus come to give life? Yes. Life in abundance? And you have life? No, what is life? You said you love life. Give us the mic, please. Are you, we are ready to answer? Okay. I said self. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let me see what she's saying. She has got life and Jesus has come to give his life in abundance. So tell me, what is life? Life. So Jesus came to give you breath. Anybody? Okay, I'll give you. I'll give you an example. If my thoughts are ungodly. What will be my words? Hello, what? What will my what will be my emotions? What will be my decisions? Fantastic. What will be my actions? What will be my habits? And what will be my character? So what will be my life? So life is the sum total of my words, thoughts, emotions, 
decisions, actions, habits, character, desire, will is my life. Now, when my life is self-centered, will it be any blessing to me? Or is it taking me to the path of destruction? So Jesus says, I've come to give you life. That is, I've come to give you my word that is spirit and life. My word is spirit and my word is life. So now what are you doing? You are saying, Jesus, I'm willing to exchange my words I give to you, your words I make it mine. So when you are sitting here and listening, are you listening to some story or are you listening to his word? And his word is full of what? Spirit and life. So when you are receiving his word, which is full of spirit and life, you are saying what I am thinking and what Jesus is thinking is so different. So I am willing to exchange and give my thinking to Christ and take his word and his thinking, I take it to be mine. And when you practice it every day, what happens to your emotions now? Change. What happens to your decision now? Change. What happens to your action now? Change. What happens to your habit now? Change. What happens to your character now? So what happened to your life? You lose it. And then to joyfully you gave it away and in exchange you got God's life. Now, are you changed from a uh, bitter, anger, frustrated, lustful Christian to a genuine Christian? How do we change? By exchanging his word to your words. So when you are sitting here, you are only hearing or uh, hating your life and saying, Jesus, I love what you are teaching and I am willing to accept, submit to your word, your life, your spirit and now the same person has completely changed into a genuine Christian. So, the question is not how much you hear. The question is how much are you ready to make the correction? And people who are very stubborn in making corrections, they are the ones in no time, they are running as a genuine Christian and signs and wonders, blessings of God, goodness of God, everything of heaven is chasing them. So my focus is, what can I get from God? Is, or my focus is, how can I receive the word that has power to change my life? Which one am I looking at? The blessing or change? So can the change take place without correction? So why are you sitting in this room? For corrections. And that correction is called as repentance. And that is called as repent, the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Is it making no sense? If you make a correction, can you be defeated? Not at all. You don't make a correction and you are asking the whole world to pray for you. You are still in miserable condition. It is your correction that decides your destination. So when will your season change? When you make the correction. So do I need to go and ask somebody any message for me? Let's say the message is beautiful. But does that mean it will come to pass? Never. 
that will come to pass only when you make the correction. And what is the correction? The root for everything, love. Now let me tell you, ask you, when you look at Mother Teresa, what hairstyle she had? Beautiful. No hairstyle. You look at the bell bottom and you look at the top, fantastic. And there were ticklies all around. And when she did this pallu, this was Zari ka pallu tha. And she was wearing high shoes. And the purse, Vittal Vaidara, somebody had given me computer ka bag diya kisi ne gift me and said brother don't give it away no man like a chess board hai ek one likhi ghi mera of the brother dead luck hai no man like a bag dead luck hai chess board to man like a ghunta tha jab man flight me jata tha na rashtris pushti di can I keep your bag there क्यों चेस बोर्ड है ना विट्टल वगैरह एंड इन दैट बैग आई कैन पुट माय थिंग्स बिकॉज इट्स वेरी डेलिकेट बैग देन आई वेंट एंड गिव टू मैन सेड ये बैग से मेरा काम नहीं होएगा सब लोग मेरे को बैग को देखते हैं मेरे को कोई नहीं देखता क्योंकि ये पूरा मिसमैच है पर दे लुक एट मी गोइंग लाइक दिस टू विट्टल वाल बोल के इसने किधर उड़ाया तूने को दे दिया गला चौक टू माइल से ना मेरी पीपल है वॉकिंग हार्ड टू गेट दर विटल वाइल आप एक पीछे को फिगर नहीं मिलता है बट अब पीछे वो अंडरस्टैंड्स द वर्ल्ड बोलता है ये विटल वाइल से मेरा काम नहीं होगा आपने जो बैकपैक है उसमें ये सामान पे सामान डालते हैं एकदम मस्त चलता है और अभी मैं सात किलो में घूमता पूरा वर्ल्ड लगेज का टिकट भी बच गया आई डिड अ टोटल है माई दिस ट्रिप आई सेव एटी टू थाउजेंड ओनली इन लगेज अब वो एटी टू थाउजेंड किधर कम में आएगी नहीं कितना चलना पड़ता है यहां से वहां तक चलना पड़ता है चलो यहां उसमें क्या एटी टू थाउजेंड खाली लगेज में पैसा बचा People should not know you how good you look. People should know you how good your heart is. नहीं तो हमारा शोरूम देखो, बहुत लोग बोलते थे वो देखने के टाइम ही गुंडा दिख रहा था। अभी लॉर्ड ने कहा मना हो क्या क्या करेगा ही ना? वो थोड़ी बिल्कुल की जैसे गाया। So I was always saying Lord, ये लोग वो सबको बिल्कुल कहा दिया, मैं वो क्या क्या कहा लावा दिया। So he said, tell me one thing. जो आंटर रहते ना उसको सबसे बड़ा गुस्सा रहता कौए से क्यों बोल द मैन ऑफ द क्रोस इज हंटर डू क्या 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 ऑल द एनिमल्स आर हलट बट देर इज डेंजर लेकिन बिल्कुल जाएगा तो सब लोग शिकारी पर उड़ा देगा अपना आवाज सुनते ही सबको मालूम पड़ जाए शेतन बाज में चल बाग तैयार हो जा Hallelujah. So the Lord gave me an example, and I said, "Wow, God, you gave me a sound carker. Well, no problem. No. But when the car is going to stop, I'm going to shut down the car. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some girls are in depression. One such girl is in depression. She said, 'Depression. Then what will my hair and hair be like? What will my hair and hair be like?'" अरे तू तो शोरूम वाली पीस है अब तू डिप्रेशन में मैं गोड़ा वाला लेकिन बहुत मस्त है डिप्रेशन से बाहर आई नहीं क्यों नहीं ओ ओ लगती है क्या गोड़ा वाली चिकनी है ना हाँ डिप्रेशन में थी क्यों नहीं तो देखा है ना ओ ओ स्क्रीन पे भी नहीं आती थी मुड़ियों में कोई इसी ने उसको कुछ बोला था ले लेके वही बैठा था मेरे को तो एक बड़ा वाला पीस है ये ना सब स्कार्स 
बात करते हैं अपना पास लाइफ का वो तो अभी स्टार हो गए अपने को टेस्टी मुझे शेयर करने की जरूरत नहीं ऐसे चेहरे पर देख के मालूम पड़ते ये कहां से आया छुटकुल के लिए गया बट वॉट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इज आफ्टर गेटिंग द फ्रीडम इज फ्लैश स्टिल कंट्रोलिंग यू देन प्लीज यू नेवर गॉट फ्रीडम यू आर स्टिल इन अ बॉन्डेज एंड यू आर नेवर टेस्टेड वॉट गॉड एज प्लान फॉर यू यू आर स्टिल लिविंग इन द लेफ्ट ओवर्स आई वॉज आस्किंग अ क्वेश्चन वॉट वॉज आई आस्किंग अ क्वेश्चन अबाउट लाइफ यू गॉट इट ओके द स्टैंडर्ड फॉर द स्पिरिट कंट्रोल लाइफ द स्टैंडर्ड फॉर द स्पिरिट कंट्रोल लाइफ is the law is the law ma 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 for example i asked brother bernard or anybody what is the size of this room now they say brother approximate this one somebody say approximate this one third one is approximate this one but is there some standard What the standard? Take a tape, measure it, calculate it. You get accuracy. Correct. In the same way, what is the standard of a person who is spirit-led, controlled life? What is the measurement? The the tape is the law, and what is the measurement? all law is accomplished when i love others as i love myself so in the whole day are you thinking about your benefits yes 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 chip chip how come this one also went off no no this one in what day the battery for oh, this one battery is weak this one is not connected to the current no see now both want to give see this is called as love thank you now you understand i'll get up from my place i'll go and give him did i ask you no did you ask say go and give him Yeah, that's why you got up. What about you? Same, no? Now, in the same way, in our everyday life, do you see people around you who need your help? Yes. But do we get up? So, are you spirit-led, spirit-controlled, or flesh-controlled? So, what's the measurement? Love. now with this measurement when you check are you a spirit control man or self control man aap dekhna mat hai aaj kya ho raha hai khane mein what's the menu today chicken curry to roz kha raha hai कल बोल रहा था बिरयानी बनाने वाला जरा पूछ के देख दो और फिर सामने वाले को चम्मच देने वाला है देखने के लिए कौन कौन सब ढूंढता है और मैं उधर जाके खड़ा रहने वाला है देखने के लिए और यू थिंक पीपल विल बी नाउ सर्चिंग फॉर पीस क्या जो मिला वो डालेगा But just because I'm standing and looking at you, Dalega, 
What about God looking at you 24 hours? What about Jesus looking at you 24 hours and talking to you in the retreat and now when he sees you self-centered, selfish, he seems disqualified, disqualified, disqualified. If you can get disqualified for small things, can he trust you for big things? Then you are saying, I am praying so much Lord but nothing is happening. You pass the test and you see your promotion. In no time from where to where you will go. So in the kingdom of God, is he looking for smart people? He is looking for people who are willing to pass the test. And to pass the test also, remember, it's not your strength. It's the word that changes your thinking. That word is spirit and life. And that spirit will help you to exercise your decision that you took and when you finish the whole thing you'll be saying it was so good man I don't know how it happened but it happened because now you're doing it not with your ability you're doing it with God's ability tell me honestly yesterday you saw me come at 8.30 we started till 11 o'clock right 11.30 it was Okay, can a person speak for so many hours? Can a person speak and study the notes and come with the notes and speak for so many hours? Humanly not possible. But with the Spirit of God all things are possible. So, so can I say I preach for 11 hours? I never did that. God's Spirit in me is ready to do if I am willing to depend on him. I was sitting there and I was asking him, what should I do, take, take the hymn now? And he said, okay brother, whatever. Then I thought to myself, if I give you a hymn, you will get healed. But if I give you a teaching, you have the root that heals. Which one should I give you? What are you getting now? And what happens to the flesh root? It's getting uprooted only with your permission. If you don't give him permission, he says, it's okay. I've given you the freedom to choose. I will not choose for you. It's your choice. And the person who is very quick to say, Lord, I'm willing to choose you rather than my flesh. I'm ready to make the correction. Even if it looks lost at the moment, I know one thing, that you, your word, can never fail. Right on. You wrote the standard for the spirit control life is the law. And the measurement of this, and the measurement of this is love. So from now on, from now on, what should be your top priority? So, so your relationship with God will be first God, and what you receive from God to others. Look at Jesus. His first relationship with God that he spent the night and the day he spent with others was there any benefit that he was looking for himself let that experiment be let this fan be closed for the next three hours and now your flesh is saying Test 
टेस्ट जाने के पहले ही हो रहा है सही दस मिनट तो रखे यार दस मिनट बैठना ए भाव धा मिनट बैठना धा मिनट ये लोग टेस्ट करने भी नहीं देते हो गया ना मेरे को तो अच्छा लगता है इवन वट एवर आई डू वेद आई एम प्लेइंग वेद आई एम ड्राइविंग वेद आई एम वॉकिंग मैं टारगेट रखता है इतना टाइम में हम लोग को उधर पहुंचना है वजन के साथ आई लाइक टू प्ले गेम्स वेद आई एम वॉकिंग ऑन द स्टेज हाउ क्विक कैन आई गो अप टू द टॉप आई प्ले गेम्स एवरी टाइम सो आई एम एंजॉइंग एवरी मोमेंट दैट आई एम डूइंग Even when the fan is off, let's let's play the game for one hour. Let me check whether I can withstand all that pressure for one hour without a fan. No problem. Even if there's no bed, no problem. I can sit on this chair and have a burst of my sleep on this chair without any hindrance. I like to play games. मजा आता है. और जब जीतता ना है आनंद ही आनंद है ए आनंद ही आनंद है वेन वेन द फैन इज ऑफ उसी में तो आनंद बढ़ गया ना अंदर क्या है सी इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो हाउ जेन्यून यू आर अ क्रिश्चियन यू ओनली कम टू नो अंडर प्रेशर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू ग्रो अ क्रिश्चियन देन यू कैन ओनली ग्रो अंडर प्रेशर and pressure when you use it in the right way it will make you very strong the same pressure when you are bitter it will tear you apart they are not even looking at me now okay right there are three relationship there are three relationship that we can take that we can take towards the law of god first one some people see the law some people see the law as their enemy Anybody can give an example. Some people see the law as an enemy. The example from the Bible also you can give. Now, was the prodigal son safe in his father's house? Did his father provide everything? Yes. But in his father's house, were the rules and regulations? Yes. Did he like them? No. Did he want freedom? Yes. So, for the prodigal son, the father's house with the laws was an enemy. That's why he did not want to live in his father's house. But were they all provision in his father's house? did he treat his father's instruction as friendship or enemy that's why he wanted to get out of that house and get freedom free from father's rules and regulations i did the same i walked out of my father's house because i wanted freedom so the rules and regulation that father had in the house was for my betterment or to torture me so once i got freedom which look like freedom now can i do what i please so now i was breaking every law of god and enjoying my life to the full with 
the resources that I had in my business. Now, was it really a freedom? Now, I was free from my father's house, free from instructions, rules and regulations. But was my flesh ruling over my freedom? See, he says, you have been called for freedom. But he tells me, do not give your flesh even a slightest chance. Now, in my freedom, did I give the flesh full chance? So now I was controlled by freedom or was I controlled by my flesh? So if I'm controlled by my flesh, am I free? It looks like I'm free, but actually speaking, I am getting deeper and deeper into slavery. I'm getting into deeper and deeper into bondage. I'm getting into deeper and deeper into a curse. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So right now, the flesh does not want to do, the flesh does not want anything to do, the flesh does not want anything to do with any kind of law. The flesh does not want to do, the flesh does not want anything to do with any kind of the law. Especially in Versailles. Are there any signals? There. And, and what? There are signals. And everybody is obedient to the signal. So you are, you are the first car stopped at the signal and the person behind is honking pa 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 and is red. Not possible. And then he takes a reverse, overtakes you and shows you one sign language and goes. And you are waiting there because it's red. And the other fellow gives you two gallies also and goes. And with him goes four or five acres, all giving you gallies. And you are still waiting for the green. Something happens to you in response to what they are doing. Let me see the young blood. If everybody is giving you gali, you are at the red. They are all going, passing the red. And you are still there. And they are even giving you some sign language. And when they are seeing a chicken girl, girl they are giving more gali. When there is a girl at the steering, I say yoga. Yeah. Have you heard the dialogue? But is she submitting to the rules and regulations? Are they all breaking it? And giving gali also? And doing some sign language also? Now what will be a blood pressure? Huh? लड़की लोग का भी ब्लड प्रेशर हाई होता है लड़का लोग तो बोल करे वारने से वो भी चिल्लाए ये भी चिल्लाए लड़की लोग चिल्लाए क्या क्या नहीं चिल्ला तो लोग का प्रेशर एकदम साइलेंट है नहीं बोलो लोग बोले ऐसा होता है does it happen so what is the flesh saying Everybody is going, you also go. But what are you saying? Lord, I am going to practice what your word says. Even if everybody goes, even if everybody gives me gali, even if everybody is showing me a sign language, thank you Lord, I only need to respond them with love and there is a great reward for me in heaven. Because this happened to me. Pahla mein bhi torta tha. Then I would stand. Ab pichola chilla raha hai. Ab aadhi jaane ke dhan gali bhi de raha hai. Ah? 
five, four, I think it's five, four, they all want to start going. मैं एक बात बताऊं ब्रदर भांदर से भांदर का जो रास्ता ना वहां से थाना एनीबडी इज ट्रेवल्ड एनीबडी ट्रेवल वेन इट कम्स टू थाना है ये देर आर फोर क्रॉस रोड ना नॉर्मली कितना रहता है फोर बट थाना के उधर फाइव है अर्ली मॉर्निंग सेवन ओ क्लॉक पांच लेना है And there was a girl who was a police constable. Edam suka, who gare to girega. In uniform and controlling all traffic alone. And even the scooter was going tiki tiki tiki. Should he sell true? Only one finger. And everything was in law and order. One single slim girl in a uniform. And the Lord said, "Can you see what she's doing?" I said, "Yes, Lord, I can see that." If a truck is to pass by at a speed, she might fall with the breeze. But how come even the truck driver is submitted to her? I said, Lord, she has got a uniform. Ask her to take off the uniform and do. Then there is a tapli mark. He said, What is so special about the uniform? I said, Look at the pocket, Lord. She has got a walkie-talkie also. The moment somebody breaks the law, she'll call the head office. Such and such truck chasing. Such and such person chasing. Will that person be in trouble? Yes. Does she have the whole department to back her up? Yes. Then he asked, "What about you?" I said, "Lord, even I got a uniform." People can't see it. I know I got a uniform, and the demons obey your uniform. How many Christians know? That they walk in heaven's uniform. <coughs> and when you know you are in heaven's uniform, and you say stop, demons have to stop in the name of Jesus. If you are a teacher in school, and the students are making noise, and you can bang the duster, and they are making no noise, but if the other teacher walks in. And the whole class is quiet. Why? The one knows how to use the authority; the other one doesn't know how to use the authority. And if the principal is coming, he is not even talking; he is walking in, and everybody is silent when he is there at the veranda. In the same way, you as a Christian who is walking in love and on the word of God, when the moment you walk in, everything has to change. I'm listening. Ask a question to yourself. Do you walk in a uniform? How do you know you are walking in a uniform? When you walk in love, you are walking in heaven's uniform. Because remember, God is love, and where there is love, there is God. And when there is God, the demons tremble where there is love. So most of the time, are we in God's uniform or Satan's uniform? If you are with bitterness and you are saying devil come out, he is saying what come out? I am already new. We both are in the same team, man. But the moment you shift from hatred to love, now you are torturing and tormenting the devil. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, can you see the stars on my shoulder? हम लोग कभी ऑफिसर को देखते स्टार्स देखते कि नहीं एक स्टार वाला है दो स्टार वाला है तीन स्टार वाला है द सेम इट इज इन द स्पिरिचुअल राम एंड वेन यू गेट स्टार्स वेन यू पास द टेस्ट 
Can you ask your neighbor, Kitna star or Hari? That is how your life is. So when you got multiple stars and you are in the family, and the family, the devil is using every member of the family, but you got plenty of stars of victory, Sabko change ho You don't get, you don't uh, see the family changing by your preaching. The family starts changing by your lifestyle. Hallelujah. Right on. The flesh wants to do The flesh wants to do its own thing. Its own thing. Now you take a pause and read from where you wrote, some people see the law as the enemy. Two, the flesh wants to do its own thing. Read. And ask a person, am I caught Am I looking at the word of God as my enemy? As Am I looking at God's instruction as an enemy? Or I want to do what I want to do. I've got my freedom. I will do what I desire to do. Check out. And talk to God and ask Him, do you need to make a correction or everything is alright? Make a prayer and tell God, do you need a correction? Do I take the instruction as my friend or do I take instruction as an enemy? Because remember one thing, if you are asking God for a miracle, then the first thing he will say, follow my instruction. If you are asking God for a breakthrough, He will first tell you, Are you willing to follow my instruction? And if you spend more time in listening to His word, meditating on His word, and start following the instruction, your life will change. I will give you my story. There was a time when I would go to every place where there were retreats. And I would be waiting when there would be laying of hands. And if there are seven there, I would go to all the seven. And I would not be satisfied. I would go the second time, so I got fourteen times laying of hands and I would feel I got no power. Then came a day when the Lord saw that I am hungry and thirsty for him. He said, I will give you an instruction. In those days we used to have Walkman. And he said, take one empty cassette and with your voice select those passages from the Bible where you can see me healing people, where you see me casting out demons, 
you record that on the cassette. And I used the C90, so 45 minutes I recorded with my voice, reading slowly. And then he said, plug it into your ears and hear every word attentively. It was hardly 10 minutes. I started manifesting and started thinking. I put it again, started again. And then I began to think. Seven people twice laid hands on me, nothing happened. The word of God with my voice recorded and I heard it. The manifestation began. That day I decided I'm not going anywhere and asking people to lay hands on me, but I'm going to spend time in hearing the word with my voice so that my spirit can be attentive, hear it, and change my thinking. And I started doing that. And might be in my life, I was puking for around six months, but at the same time I was preaching. But every time I puked and puked, I found my habits had changed, addictions had changed, desires had changed, everything was changing, and I found the secret. I can give you the secrets how God brought me out, but the question is, are you still going to follow the instruction? You might be champion in praying, I will spend more time in studying the word and speaking the word and believing the word and that is also a prayer. You know when you are praying, you are talking to God. When you are studying the word, God is talking to you. I prefer God talking to me and me talking to God less. Well, when God is talking to me, He shows me the flaws in my life. And now I talk to God about the flaws that I have and ask him, God, help me to make the correction. Which one is better? You talk to God and you never hear God talking to you. You might be spending one hour in talking to God. I might spend half an hour God talking to me. But I'll tell you, I'm in a more better place than you are. Because when God talks to me, He shows me the correction that I need to do. But when I'm talking to God and I did not hear what God wants to tell me, I don't even know whether I'm on the right path or the wrong path. That is why when people spend more and more time on teaching, they come back and say, my life is changed. What changed your life, man? You heard what God gave you instruction and you carried out that instruction. Everything has to change. But that word is God himself. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, do, you, do you want me to take a break? Okay. What if it happens 20 minutes? Because when I'm going to take the second point and then you say take a break, I will not take a break. If you want I can give you a break now. No, no, okay, I then give me... Ah. No, go to usko bhi line mein khana rana padega. Because I want everybody to listen to the word. The, only the word can change. Please, I want, I, should I go on the knees and tell you? No. You give honor to God by honoring the word, your life will change. If you say, I'm Mr. So and so and I want to meet you, you can meet me and go, I'm not God. But if you sit down and listen to the word, you are giving honor to God. Whoever you are, in the eyes of God, you are Mr. Nobody. Might be in the world you are somebody, but in the eyes of God you are Mr. Nobody, nothing. But when you give honor to God, your life has changed. God is looking for those people who can give honor to Him. 
and what's the honor to sit like mr nobody was jairus mr somebody who was he leader of the synagogue i want to ask you in the midst of all the crowd can the leader of the synagogue come and kneel down in public and say jesus please come to my house and the leader of the synagogue the leaders so called at that time were all enemies with jesus they hated him and a jairus can come and kneel down and talk to jesus what about his friends will the news reach them will they be his friends jairus had the guts to understand that jesus only has a only jesus is the person who can save his daughter he had the guts to come out and stand for the truth and be there to tell jesus come do you do you think all the others pharisees and everybody will be his friends you know in the kingdom of god don't wait for majority in the kingdom of god majority doesn't win in the, in the kingdom of god you can be only person standing on the word you you are the only one who will make it to heaven i am not in majority i don't care who is with me who is not with me i only care that god is with me and i will honor god and his place is the first place and if i honor god that he is the first place and my life still is turning on him what jar is god jesus is coming to my house i want to ask you all these people have come and jarus comes and says please come to my house what about the others but how is jarus is approach he kneels down you know what he does he worships jesus and says i am somebody in the world's eye but in your eyes i am nobody i am ready to take any instruction you say can you please come to my house and see my daughter and the way he worships jesus is desire is here to preach to the people but when he worships he changes his direction and goes with jairus you can change jesus is direction towards you by the way you worship him and the moment you realize that when i honor jesus to the highest priority highest position jesus is no matter how this is he has to change the direction and say come on i'm coming with you that's what he's looking at he is not looking at who you are the world calls you whoever the world calls you is nothing in his eyes he is the creator he doesn't have favoritism he has no discrimination but is looking for true worshipers who worship him praise god is god opening your eyes imagine i did not have the max ten dunia imagine i did not have money to buy a max ten but when i learned the principles of the kingdom i said this is what i will follow all the days of my life and god has promised me that everything that i need to finish my assignment he has deposited in my account i am enjoying my life to the full Praise God. I'll give an example of honoring God. If you build something for seventeen years, and now there's going, there's a conflict. I can go to the court and have a conflict, or I can say, "You can have it," and I go empty. I don't fight. You can have it, and you give it away. What? 
you worked for 17 years to achieve. What will be the condition of the person after that? In depression? Yes. I never went into depression. Why? But things don't give me joy. Ministry doesn't give me joy. Gadgets don't give me joy. The only person who gives me joy is Christ. Everything else can be stolen. Everything else can be gone. But if you have got Christ who gives you joy, it cannot be stolen. Because if your joy is in something and when that something is lost, you are depressed. But if your joy is in Christ, no matter what happens, the storm comes, the flood comes, anything comes, you are still with joy because Jesus cannot be stolen from you. And Jesus never changes. People today are with you. Tomorrow they will be against you. But Jesus will never be against you. So if you build your relationship on Christ, you will be joyful 24 hours 7. Open your eyes and see. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Go to Mark chapter 4. How to get this joy? Verse number 9. Can somebody read it loudly? Mark 4, 9. Oh, Bernard, can you read it loudly, please? And he... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said unto them, He that had ears... Ah. He that had ears to hear... He that has ears to hear... Let him hear. Let him hear. Then... And when... And when he was alone, and when he was alone, they that were about him, and they that were about him or around him, with the twelve, with the twelve, asked of him, asked of him the parable, the parable. Then, and he said unto them, and Jesus said unto them, unto you it is given, unto you. Unto you, unto you, unto you, unto you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. To know the mystery of the kingdom of God, the word mystery means the secret, something that is hidden, to you has been given the power to know. And then, but unto them, but unto them, so that means there are two categories of people. There is a you category and there is a them category. But oh, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. There is a you category and there is a them category. You category. Jesus saying, God has given you the power to know the secret of the kingdom of God. But to them. them. But to them what? But to them that are without. That are without. All these things. All these things and parables. Are done in parables. Are done in parables. Then. That seeing they may see. That seeing they may see. Seeing they may see. And not perceive. And not perceive. Then. And hearing. And hearing. They may hear. They may hear. And not understand. And not understand. Then. Lest any time they should be con converted. Ah. Why? If they see and understand, hear and understand, they will be converted and their sin should be forgiven them. And their sins to be forgiven them. So why is Jesus teaching in parables? Why 
teach the Bible in parables so that they understand. But Jesus is saying he is speaking in parables so that they may not understand. Why is the word of God in parables? So that seeing they may see but not perceive. Hearing they may hear and not understand because if they understand they will surely be converted and the sins will be forgiven. So is God, is Jesus saying I am speaking to the people in coded language so that when they see they don't understand. You, the then people. And you people, he says, you have been given the power to understand. Why is Jesus saying, why is there discrimination between you and them? There are two sets of people, right? There are the you people and there are the them people. Them people are sitting for the meeting, they won't understand. The you people are there, they are sitting in the same meeting, but they understand everything. Because when they understand everything, they are converted. Their lives are changed. But the dumb people, they can sit and sit and sit and still not understand and go back home the same. Why is Jesus doing this? Ask your neighbor, are you the you or the them category? Which category are you in? How do you know? <laughs> Just because you said you, you are in the you category? How do you know you are in the you category? There are some people, they come for the retreat the 10th time, the 15th time, and still their lives are miserable. One of the reasons is, they are still in the them category. And there are people who are coming for the first time, and everything is changed. Why? They are in the you category. Now my question is, who decides whether you are in the you category or them category? So how, how do you know you are in the you category? Huh? Holy Spirit la basun te kai hai te mi ghari zang vichar har teva mala te samajnar. Tu kukla hai re? Uttan hai. Uttan hai. Where did this man come from? Uttan. Take my mic jara badli jara. Samnadi mein gaya tha kya? No. Phir tera uttar sab barabar kaisa hai? Lagta hai tum logo jaga pandit log ne sikha hai. How do you know you are in the U category? Look at the tenth verse. The tenth verse is a decider. What is the tenth was saying, Brother Bernard? Bhaava nahi karna, please. Ah? No, no, no. Uh, on the mic, on the mic. Ah, now it is on. Yeah, tell me. Okay. So what's the secret? When is? Alone. So do you spend time with Jesus alone or do you spend time with Jesus in public? Now you spend three days here, no? Do you spend three days with Jesus in public or you spend, spend three days with him alone? No people around you. But here we were all together, right? But do you like to spend time with him when he's alone? Because remember, the kingdom of God is not cheap. God is looking for who are the ones who really want the treasure of heaven. It's not cheap. The person who is after the treasure He's seeking day and night. He's seeking day and night for the treasure. 
tell me my dear sister honestly from the time i pulled you from your there and you're sitting here has it made a difference so imagine the 10 days you spent there and a few minutes or one hour you spent here has it made a difference so now when she is spending there will she get the power to know the mystery of the kingdom of god she is in the you category or them category when she is there will she come for 10 days and get anything in this retreat no but if she says god that is not important for me this is important and i will sit down here and listen attentively now god is saying she is in the you category so let me open her eyes to know the secrets of the kingdom of god attending the retreat does not mean god will open your eyes he wants to see why are you sitting here what is your ambition what is your heart condition and that's why he says the person will praise god the person will clap his hands but the person will do all that and he will see he will hear but not understand but the day he understands he makes the world the highest treasure of his life he is in love with the world his passion is the world and now he doesn't want to live his life for anything else but for the treasure so come on let me ask you 24 hours god has given you where do you spend the most of your 24 hours many people spend their 24 hours at work and when it comes at work log in and log out will be on time but when it comes to god's kingdom will the log in and log out be at time okay come i i i don't understand when i work for the company i'll be on time log in time log out but when i work for the king of king the creator no log in no log out not even coming for the log in Yeah, go ahead. Are you here? Please do not. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not judging you. I'm just showing you the truth. For everybody. You just ask yourself, am I on time when it comes to log in, log out, when it comes to the company? Can I go late? Can I perform for the company? because if you don't perform they'll reject you but the one who can send help for you and give you heaven is your eternal home can i ask you a question bonnie yes. if you are doing the job alone Why can't another person say, brother? Tell me when to do up and down. I'll sit down there. You only tell me something from the up. I'll do up and I'll do down. Whatever you say, things can go so smooth. It is all about your heart condition. The person has to run there. The person has to come here. Why not we work in partnership? You deal with your and then I will deal with your up and down. All is about. how can i help somebody who is running all, all the time is there any more i remember when i uh, initially when i used to go for retreat in 2006 okay brother used to come back retreat in the holy family hospital there was a hall in holy family hospital and uh, i'm doing west sir brother kya tam to very west was sister lo kada ओ 
okay my wife used to sit for the retreat in front with my mother so uh, it was a huge crowd around 3 350 people so uh, my daughter was small so uh, i think so the second one was almost one year so in a, in the middle you see the ch- child crying right so she she used to cry in the middle so what i used to do i used to take the child and go behind and i used to move around with the child so brother was watching me taking care of the child okay so from from the pulpit he held at me brother what are you doing now you can imagine in front of 300 plus people brother is calling me brother what are you doing i said i'm taking care of my child right or no but he said why don't you take a notebook and sit and make notes that will help you now you can, you can imagine he is yelling over there in front of more than 300 people should i take that as an offense yes or no yes or no but what i did i listened to him i got angry for a moment but what i did i listened to him i took a notebook and i took my child at the corner i started sitting over there started making notes from that time i used to make notes i should never meet him i think so i have met him in 2011 and the reason i went to meet him was he would be there but when it comes to service he would be there to serve people not on the counter with the plates and all those things so i asked him can you tell me a story because a person cannot be consistent the first meeting the second meeting but every meeting i see you doing the most last job everybody wants to sit anybody wants to do the last job plate saaf karne ka i'm asking you so i asked him i want to know the story because you can't do that job unless there is a story and that's the time he said to me in 2006 i would have been dead man my wife would call you take instruction and she carried out the instruction and if i'm today alive my wife carried out the instruction and when i was set free she told me the story of what happened but we never asked you to pray over us she would call me at night asking for script instruction the scripture and that's the time we became friends because now he has a story and because he has a story and now things have changed he can surely change his story now saying i am blessed so let me be at peace but when a person has come from death he understands others who are on death and says god you saved me for a reason now it's my turn to take the instructions and go and give to somebody and that somebody can get saved now he is also going to the tribals he and his wife are going and the children are, i remember the uh, the second daughter's 10th uh, standard exam and they were at chatisgarh can a mom leave the daughter in standard 10th with her grandmother and go on a mission standard 10th tell me no and this mother is saying even if my daughter gets 99 percent and she has failed in the word of god she has failed it all and even if she gets 40 percent and she has passed in the word of god i will say my daughter got 100 out 100 because i am interested in the word of god exam and not and not and not in the academics and she got how much percent 93 percent 93 percent the other one also 93 but because she got 93 and i'll do today the word i told the baby i want to give you a reward the next retreat which is going to happen in chatisgarh you are going to come for a mission she was so excited and she came on a mission and there was this boy abhishek who had lost his temper he would come with a stick inside the church and hammer people if you see the chatisgarh uh, teaching you will see i am preaching and the boy is blind lying down on the altar with his legs up 
and all that. And I said, Abhishek is a man of God. Does he look like a man of God? When the people are sitting there, he'll pick up anybody's bottle and drink and throw the bottle. Do people want to hammer him? And I said, the real challenge for us in this retreat is, how many of you who are genuine Christians can love him and bless him? So, Abhishek and his, sister, his daughter became good friends. So, she would make him sit beside him, beside her, and when we would go to the next church, I would tell Abhishek, you are coming with me, you are my team member. Will anybody take him as a team member? Where everything he does is going to reflect on me. And he goes to the next parish and does the same. But did I put him out? No. He is coming with me. And the best part over oh, there is when you are travelling, it's a one and a half hour travel, two hours travel, so he's in the car. Can he run? And she's sitting next to him. And the whole journey, she's making him repeat, I am the body of Christ. And Satan, you have no power, no place in me. And he's listening to her. And now, she's preaching to him. And it was her preaching that set Abhishek free. And Abhishek is now a normal boy. The real challenge is when you take somebody who nobody loves as your team member. But my team member is not those who are smart and those who are perfect. And nobody is perfect. Those who are smart and those who do. My team members are bhodas, drug addicts, those who are gone case. They are my team members. And these are my team members. When they come to God, God is honored because every person including the Christians are the ones who reject these people. And Jesus says, when you serve these people, you serve me. The whole parish knows that Abhishek is Brother Johnson's team member. But when he was bad, will anybody take him? Now, his father looking at the son, what had happened? It was a uh, uh, time of sowing seeds. And we had three months retreat. The father said, forget the field, forget the money, I am not interested in anything. He took the seeds, threw it in his field, just like that. And he said, I am going for the retreat. In summer he threw the seeds. In June, it's not yet raining. And he came there for three months retreat. And do you know what happened? He got a bumper harvest. That's the proof. That's the proof. And who was taking care of the field? Abhishek was taking care of the field. I can give you so many testimonies when you walk into the supernatural, when you are with the Lord. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you need guts to believe in the word. You want to say something? Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need guts to follow the instruction and not get offended. But I see people getting offended for small things. You can be a preacher for 20 years, 25 years, but the moment you got offended, you are a baby Christian. Photo <laughs> lena yaar. How does it look a person is coming with a Audi car? Because when you are offended you are still a baby. Not yet grown. In the world you might be grown, but in the spiritual realm, in the kingdom of God, you are still a... Imagine every Sunday people are coming with imported cars. Might be it looks funny, but that's the truth. That's what the Bible says. The 
That's why Jesus said you will know a tree by its fruit. Not by the car that you go by. Hallelujah. Zala play this window. Praise God. Bara what lagi nai? Break me ala bara what lagi nai? Father, thank you so much, so much, so much, so much. Lord, in all this that we are learning, help us to practice, prepare, practice, and train ourselves that the moment the enemy comes to strike, our response should be what you have taught us. And as we respond and do not react, we imitate you, and we have now the image of Christ in us. We are no longer self-centered people, a lot of selfish people, or all the time self is sitting on a throne of a heart, but self is crucified and stays crucified every moment of a life. So that you are no longer on the cross, but you are sitting on the throne of a heart, guiding us and teaching us and leading us. And thank you for showing us the measurement of our freedom is the measurement of our love for others. Thank you. In Jesus' name.